Hello, my name's Robert Dean Steele, and this is your Cornerstone Community Church Service for January, uh, June, I should say, 13th. Let's open our time with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you today for all the things that are going to be shared with us, and we thank you for the word of God that is going to be presented today. We ask your blessing upon our service and our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're going to start off with Days of Elijah. song just talking about the fact that Jesus Christ is coming back very soon and we need to be ready constantly for that particular area. You know, I, I read a Facebook pay, uh, post today that says, you know, your life can change in the blink of an eye. And that is absolutely true because Jesus Christ could come back in a blink of an eye. And a blink of an eye is actually a millionth of a second. Everything could change. So we need to live our lives as if this is the final day. Well, that's that's why I'm trading my sorrows.
is what we need to do. We need to trade all of those things and give them over to the Lord, the rock of ages. tell you today that he is the rock of our salvation and it's he is the person that we can stand on today knowing that he has everything under control well our scripture for today is and uh message today is about true consistency. But before we give you our message, let's open our time with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you today for the word of God. And we thank you, Lord, for what we're about to share from the word in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this is our last message and presentation in our four-part series on the 12 lessons of life found in Psalm chapter 15. Benjamin Franklin had his 13 principles of life. Jordan, Jordan Peterson has his 12 principles. But David gave his 12, and I think I'd rather have David. David said that those who do these principles or rules of life will not be shaken. Now, David makes it very clear. If you want a solid life, it must be built upon the Lord. Now, Jesus told his audience that uh, um, if a person does the will of God, uh, he must build his life on the solid rock. And when the storms of life come, you will not be shaken. That sounds pretty good advice. So let's look today at the last three. So this is what uh, David says. Now, he says, does not change his mind or as the NIV says, does not change, or as the King James says, changes not. Now, it almost seems part of our other one that we talked about last week when it talks about keeping your promise, but it's also a rule of life in all our other areas of life. There's a standard of life found in the Word of God. It is a standard for faith and practice. And also, as Christians, we need to be like Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible tells us in Hebrews 13, 8, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, what David is talking about is a consistency in character. You know, being faithful, walking in integrity, being trustworthy, honest, and stable. Some would call this maturity. Many people get older, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they become mature. Change is inevitable and healthy, but there are some things that are not. Culture, morality, standards, truth, societal, all talk about and are driven by change. And some of them say this is consistent, but there are some things that must not change. Now, what we're talking about is things that I talked about in our last message. Truth, 
laws, principles, statutes, and the laws of the Bible are timeless and proven. We can stand on them. We can stand on, thus saith the word of the Lord. It doesn't matter what people say, if the Bible says it's wrong, it is wrong. Those who stand in the name of inclusion, uh, openness, tolerance, progress, um, but put aside the word of God for the sake of cultural relevance are often are actually false prophets, liars, unsaved and deceived. The Bible does not need to be rewritten. It needs to be re or reinterpreted. It needs to be reread. God's consistency and stability brings order to chaos, truth to lies, knowledge to ignorance, and discipline to confusion. Remember, God is not the author of confusion. The devil is. Like anyone, I believe in change, but not at the expense of truth, righteousness, and judgment. Then he gets real practical when he talks about lending without expecting something in return or he who lends money to the poor with it, without interest. David was again emphasizing a law given by Moses of never charging interest on a loan to a fellow Jew or to a poor man. Jesus talked about uh, not taking a poor person's possessions as collateral for loan. David was talking about being generous. He was talking about helping others without any thought of any return or favor. This follows uh, with clarity or charity, uh, acts of kindness, generosity, and love. Here's a quote about being generous. Being generous connects you with people. It improves your relationship. Generous people find success as they help others succeed. Generous people believe uh, changing even one life is worthwhile. Generous people see the skills and resources of others. Now, here are seven reasons why you should be generous. Number one, being generous makes you happier and generates happiness. God loves a cheerful giver. Secondly, general, generous people trust in people. Also, thirdly, generous people give first. They don't wait for others to be generous to them. First, they decide to give also as well. Fourthly, it shows that you have the nature and character of God. Fifthly, you understand that as you give, you also receive. It's the law of the sower. Also, it's a command to give. And lastly, it releases the resources of heaven. That's why we need to give. Also, Jesus says, when we give and help others, we are doing it unto him. We are helping Jesus, as Mother Teresa put it, in his distressing disguise. Helping the poor without any thought of return or benefit, you will receive a reward from God. What you do in secret, your Father in heaven will reward you. We are God's hands of love. Now, the last principle we're going to talk about today, and our last principle found in first in Psalm 15 is this. Who does not accept a bribe against the innocent? Now, obviously, David was talking about uh, officials in authority. But as a leader, he was definitely thinking about the abuse of a power and authority. Now, this can apply to every level, a parent, a teacher, municipal, provincial, federal leader. It could be business or social. Never be involved in a wrong doing, especially against the innocent. God keeps the record and no one gets away with anything. Corruption is everything, everywhere. But the one who is righteous will never be involved in it. Now, there are two reasons why corruption happens greed and evil desires. Did you know that corruption has an impact on investment, trade, aid, growth, inequality, a black market economy, and crime? It leads also to skepticism, cynicism, and the belief that all politicians are corrupt. This is what's happened in my country of Canada. The present government has proven that that is true. And that's why we need to pray that uh, we have righteous government. You know, the Bible says that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a um, a terrible thing for the land. Now, the only answer 
to all of this is the church and society as a whole. We need to become, again, the voice of morality. We need, that's why we need a righteous, holy, and powerful church. The ch world needs to be more afraid of the church than we should be of the world. Remember, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen? So never take part in anything to hurt others, especially the innocent. Here are reasons why people hurt hurt others. They're abused. They're angry. They have control issues. They don't set boundaries. Uh, they also as well have mental issues. they afraid, lack of empathy, tired, or even exhausted. Now, there are reasons. These are reasons and not justifications or excuses. Everyone has, a vict has become a victim in pain, hurt, or offended. But the secret, now this is very important, the secret is to forgive, which is, of course, another sermon. James says that, taking, uh, that true religion is taking care of widows and orphans and staying unpolluted by the world. We are our brother's keepers. Never gossip, slander, lie, mistreat, or hurt another. God is watching, and he will be the judge. What we do unto others will be done unto us. Remember, treat others as you would want to be treated. Now, David says this, those who do these things will never be uh, shaken. They are the foundation of life. They should be a philosophy for living. No one and nothing will ever shake them because their lives are based on on the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They have followed the Word of God. They have a rock to which they stand. They have a refuge and a fortress. They have followed um, uh, uh, the Lord, and they have a firm grasp on reality. They know that all things will work together for good. They're not anxious, but actually peaceful. They have cast all their cares, their, fur their fears, and burdens to the Lord, and He is carrying them. This is their promise and reality. If you want peace that passes all understanding, turn it over to the Lord and let his grace and uh, promise come to you today. As we close today, I've shared with you 12 principles over the last four weeks, talking about how God wants to not shake your life. Do you feel like you're being overwhelmed? Do you feel like things are being shaken? This is that moment that you and I can receive from the Lord. So, Father, we thank you today. As we put our lives on the Lord Jesus Christ, we choose in this moment to not be shaken. Now, if we don't have a relationship with you, Lord, this is the moment that we're going to ask you into our lives. We're going to say, dear Jesus, would you come into my heart? Would you change me from the inside I accept you as my Lord and my Savior, and thank you today for the eternal and abundant life. Well, I'd like to sing you another song, and then I'm going to pray for you for your needs today. I see the King of glory coming on the clouds with fire. The whole world should, the whole
want to pray for your need right now. It could be physical, spiritual, emotional, intellectual, financial, or family. Lord, we thank you today that we can bring our needs to you today. So we're going to stand first upon uh, Philippians chapter 4 that says, By your stripes we're, we're, uh, uh, our needs are permitted. So your riches and glory are going to touch us right now in the name of Jesus, and we receive it. First Peter 2.24 is the scripture that we stand upon when it comes to our healing. By your stripes we're healed. So Lord, right now, you are going to be Jehovah Rophi, our healer, and Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And we thank you for these things, and we receive them now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, my last song today is this. Lord, I give you my heart. And let that be your cry today. Oh, by the way, if you're looking for an in-person service, we do have one. And uh, in the province of Alberta, where I live, we, of course, have now uh, opened up to one-third capacity. And uh, our service is at Cornerstone Hall. We meet at Cornerstone, uh, I should say, Cornerstone Hall, uh, number 6 Tache Street, in downtown St. Albert, we follow all the COVID-19 protocols, and we would love to have you join us for that. This is my desire. that the Lord would have his way in your life. My name is Pastor Robert Dean Steele. This is the Cornerstone Community Church Service for June the 13th. And again, I invite you to come to our service. We meet at Cornerstone Hall, number 6 Tache Street in the city of St. Albert. Our service time is 11 a.m. and our doors open at 1045. You have yourself a great and godly day. <music>